Hey guys, welcome back. This is going to be a super quick video, so keep your eyes and ears open. Whenever we load an image into Cinema and dive into its options, we are faced with some very helpful attributes that oftentimes are neglected. I'm talking specifically about the black point and white point options here. These two options can help us control how our image looks like by adjusting the dark or white parts of the image. This is very helpful when trying to get exactly the information we want out of the image and as a result they can save us a lot of time. Instead of going into Photoshop to adjust the image, save a copy and load it back into Cinema, we can do all of these things inside Cinema and have a real-time feedback of how our changes affect the material. But let's see why these two options are useful. Here we have a really simple material. It contains just a GGX layer with a bit of color. To make the material more believable, we need to add some unevenness to the reflections. No surface is perfectly clean, no matter how pristine it is. To dirty things up a bit, we're going to use this texture here. To see the effect very clearly, I'm going to add it into the reflection strength layer. The result looks good, but if we want to adjust the strength of the effect, we have two ways of dealing with that. We can either load the texture in Photoshop, adjust and then resave and repeat the process until we get the result we want, or we can use the black point and white point options. So if we want to have a more subtle effect, we can go to the white point and lower the number. This means that the white color in our image will start sooner, which in turn will convert some of the grays to white. If we keep reducing the number, we can gradually get a more subtle effect. Just by adjusting this one value, we can get completely different looks, and most importantly, the results are in real time without having to deal with multiple versions of the same file. Now to exaggerate the effect and give an almost rusty look to our material, we do the opposite and just adjust the black point value. So if we gradually start increasing the number, more and more of the white and gray areas of our image will turn to black. Again, the different effects we can get just by adjusting one value are quite varied. Now, if we combine these options with the layer shader, where we can adjust the blending modes and the opacity of the images, we can get even more variations and subtle effects without leaving Cinema 4D at all. So, if you haven't used the black point and white point options before, give them a try and see how far you can go with them. It will speed up your workflow immensely. And that is it for this video. I told you it was going to be a quick one. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one.